Hello again. This time, making another post-apocalyptic building, but attempting to go taller than it is wider this time. As I noticed, a lot of the buildings I've already made have a fairly low profile. To begin with, I made three semi-hexagonal shapes, then glued some extra bits of foam core onto the edges so that it would break up the circular pattern. I then mixed them up until I had a shape I was happy with, but didn't glue them down yet. Using a knife, I cut some slits into the top, and then made some windows by slicing them out. Grabbing some corrugated cardboard with a metallic finish to it, I trimmed it down to the height of the building, so I could cut it and glue it over the sides as needed. Working around the outside, I then covered most of the surfaces with a sheet of corrugated metal while changing up the direction the sheet was going in, but keeping it to rectangular shapes. I also added some smaller rectangles where it had been patched and bulked up over time, which also breaks up the uniformity of the piece. With the base section properly clad with the cardboard, I then glued the upper section on top of it, while making sure it is slightly off-centre as well. change the types of metallic sheeting, I took some non-metallic corrugated cardboard and glued that on as well. Now when this stuff gets painted and wet, it normally malforms a bit and it takes dents a lot easier, so you get the impact of having two different types of metal used. I also realised this would be a great place for a little walkway, so I trimmed a door out before I put too much of the cladding on. Then for the windows, I took some of this mesh that I got from some packaging and glued it in place between the corrugated cardboard and the foam core walls. I used some thin wooden dowels outside the main door and pushed them into the foam core base so I had a guide hole to hot glue them in. These will serve as metal pipes outside that will give a bit of support to the canopy. Before I go any further, I decided to get a base level of paint down using black gesso as a primer. For a foundation of rust, I used a burnt umber, watering it down so it would flow more easily into the gaps, where you'd get more rust accumulating. Then to add some colour and contrast with the brown, I mixed up a lovely mint green by combining a sort of cyan colour with white and applied that very heavily over every other panel. Another part of my initiative to add a bit more colour to my project. It also doesn't matter if the coat is inconsistent, because that'll just go to add to the weather and worn effect of it, and we'll be weathering over the top anyway. Grabbing a bunch of wooden coffee stirrers, I wanted to experiment with pre-staining wood before I used it, I made a bath out of an old plastic lid, filling it with a mixture of black gesso, some Vallejo miniature primer, and then a lot of water, so you get the sort of very mild, dark staining effect on the wood. I submerged the pieces for maybe 30 seconds, and then dried them out on a polystyrene block I had spare, which had a lovely darkening effect on the wooden sticks. While those dried, I took some metallic paint and sponge, again from some packaging foam, dabbed most of the metallic off, and dabbed sporadically at the corrugated sheets. When the silver was dry, I went in with the yellow, and did the same, but on less of the panels, and even more sporadically. Again, trying to add more colour, and avoid it all looking like the same brown tone. Next up was attaching the roof to the top floor, so using hot glue, I connected that to the top. The roof being made out of more sheets of corrugated cardboard, 
with a wooden skewer framework beneath it. The piece is coming along nicely, but I need to cover up some of the gaps in the seams, so taking the wooden strips that I dyed earlier, I trimmed them down to size and glued them on using some matte mod podge. walkway on the top of the building, I took a few dabs of Mod Podge, put them on the strips, and then made a rough shape which I could then mount later. And the temptation is to go very fast with this and glue all the bits in place, but it's a lot easier to do it in pieces, let it dry, and then add more later. After checking a dry fit with the two pieces, I glued them into place. You can see the advantage of pre-dyeing the wood here and kind of pre-painting the pieces because trying to paint in between those planks underneath would have been a massive pain. With the wood curing, I then went in and touched up a few of the panels by adding a bit more paint and reducing the wear in a few sections. Having together some orange and red paint, I added a bit more flavourful rust on top of the yellow, as well as hitting the pipes to make them appear quite corroded. Moving to the base, I bulked it up using an offcut of foam core. Then with some corrugated cardboard and a bamboo skewer, I made a small kind of pylon for outside by sticking some hot glue on the corrugated cardboard and then rolling it around the bamboo skewer, then repeating the process again. then covering the join with a small piece of cardboard. For the top of the pylon I used a half bead and glued it on top of the pole. The pylon was then stabbed into the base to make a guide hole, then stuck on the base. Taking some cork flock, some fine sand, a dollop of black gesso, and PVA glue, I then mixed up a basing paste. Adding a drop of water to make it a bit more liquid. Then everywhere I wanted there to be an earthy texture, I applied the paste with the flat side of a sculpting tool. Taking some aquarium rocks, I then sprinkle them over the paste and push them down with a tool. I then did something similar to make a little boardwalk by trimming these wooden planks down and then pushing them into the paste. Giving that plenty of time to dry, I went in with a base coat of burnt umber. Making lighter and lighter browns by adding white paint to the mixture, I then went in with a heavy handed dry brush and built up a few layers of paint. Using a lighter brown I also added a bit of weathering on the lower half of the ground floor panels, which also helps to blend it into the base colours as well.
with the base almost done, I moved on to the kind of canopy sections. So taking some PVA and some water and attempting to mix it together. I then cut some rectangles of tissue paper, dunked them into the PVA mixture, and then applied them on the roof of the piece, filling in any of the gaps as well. I built up several layers of this, almost like paper mache, while attempting to maintain the square structure of the tissue paper. I gave it plenty of time to dry before dyeing it by using some watered down brown paint and letting the capillary action do most of the work for me. Once the brown had dried, I took some blue and did the same process, but picking out every other sheet, giving it a pale blue tint and making it look more like plastic than, say, canvas. On the base, I applied a bit of metallic paint to the pile on top, then took some wire and wrapped it around the top, poking one end down inside the corrugated metal, Using a pin vise, I then drilled a hole into the base of the pylon and stuck another piece of wire leading from that up the wall into the first floor of the building. It then got a thin layer of black primer. With white paint, I hit the top of the rocks on the base, as well as a few of the more pronounced ridges from the basing paste. Then moving on to my favourite bit, the grass tuft. So taking three or four of these and sticking them around the front, and it's a great opportunity to cover any gaps in the base, or anywhere the paint went a bit weird. Make sure you pet your tufts as well, to let them know they did a good job. With the tufts added, it is complete. So more of a vertical building than I normally make, but still very playable with lots of areas to position minis on. I also toyed around with the idea of doing an interior on the top floor, and that's something I'll be looking into on the next build. But for now, thanks for watching, I hope to catch you next time.